The poet says of this night, the deeper the darkness, the brighter the light shines, for love refuses to be extinguished by despair. Resilience and hope cannot be quenched while the light of love burns steadily, fueled by courage and by compassion. Look for the light, and there you will find love. Good evening, and Merry Christmas. I welcome you all to this very special service of worship, for we have gathered to proclaim the story of fierce love, the song of tenacious hope, the surprise of a God in flesh appearing, the Christmas story, the sweet, sweet song of God's great love for all people. And we tell it tonight to you in this good company with all who need to hear it, with our hearts lifted by its promise of surprising grace. No matter who you are, no matter where you find yourself on life's journey, it's yours, a gift to you from God. Welcome, everyone. I'm Jonathan Morgan, Senior Minister of First Congregational Church in Eugene, on the corner of 23rd and Harris, and I offer you a special word of welcome to those of you who may be new to our online worship services. If you're visiting family, welcome to Rainy Eugene. If you're back from school, it is so good to have you home again. If you're looking for a church home, we hope you will feel the embrace of this community, even over the distance. May you discover tonight, perhaps for the first time, the all-encompassing joy of God's presence in your life. May your heart be warmed and your understanding of life refined. May you see the world differently in the light of the Christ child in our midst. Merry Christmas, everyone. Let us call ourselves into worship. When all has gone quiet and the world begins to sleep, curried in and snug beneath a blanket of frost, when the universe holds its breath and angels begin to stretch their wings and stars begin to slide into constellations of hope, when music seems to hang in the air and creation hums its own carol about the longing for light and birth again from wintertime. Then the waiting ones gather to listen to those rumors and whisper about the birth of a child made all of light and together pass the word that soon and very soon advent will slip into sign and waiting into birth so let us gather with ever beating hearts staying with mary and joseph wondering laboring longing expecting the promise to break through the night. Please join with me in prayer. God of birth, God of light, in this time of song and prayer, in this time of silence. Reawaken in us the 
awe of Christmas. As we hear again the story of a young woman and a surprising visitor, remind us that we are called to respond to you in unexpected ways. And when we leave this place, may we be willing to sing praises for a young woman who said, yes, and the birth that we prepare to celebrate. We pray in the name of the child who would later show us how to live in the light of God's revealing love. Amen. Hear this birth narrative reading. When Mary was still engaged to Joseph, she became miraculously pregnant through the Holy Spirit, just as the angel has said in a dream. When Mary told Joseph she was pregnant, he had every reason to be upset. He knew the child was not his own and the townspeople would surely gossip. Although Joseph's first thought was to break the engagement following strict religious protocol of the day. Instead, he treated Mary with extreme kindness, thinking he might limit her exposure to public humiliation and shame. He decided to end the engagement quietly, not publicly. But God sent an angel to Joseph in a dream to explain that Mary was telling the truth and reassuring him that his marriage would be blessed by God. The angel explained that the child within Mary was from the Holy Spirit and that his name would be Jesus and that he was the Messiah, meaning God with us.
Rejoice, people of God. The light has come into the world. We enjoy the four candles of Advent, hope, faith, joy, and peace. The evergreens signify continuous life. The circle, the everlasting love of God. And now we light the candle of your nativity. With the company of heaven and with sounds of great joy, you come to us. This is the time of light and resplendent joy. The prophet Isaiah proclaimed, a time when those who walked in the shadows would see a great light, a light would shine and a child would be born to us. The evangelist Luke painted the nativity sky and repeated the heavenly song of the angels, glory, peace on earth and goodwill. John de declared that this great light is Christ, the word made flesh. This great light lives among us. By it, we behold God's glory, full of grace and truth. At Christ's nativity, we now rejoice. God, our life and light, thank you for coming this night to us. Thank you for touching all heaven and earth with grace and splendor. Shine your peace upon every corner of the world. Shine your grace upon every corner of our hearts. Amen. Hi, my friends. Merry Christmas. Tonight is the night we've been waiting and preparing for. Tonight we get to hear the next part of the story. Merry Christmas. Joseph smiled proudly as he looked down at the newborn child sleeping so peacefully in the manger. As God had instructed, they would call the baby Jesus, a name that meant Savior. Joseph was tired. All around him were the sounds of sleep, the rhythms of night. But as long as Mary and the child slept, he would lovingly keep watch. Now, on that wondrous starry night, while the rest of Bethlehem drowsed, there were others keeping watch. In bright starlit fields just outside of town, shepherds were tending their flocks. The quiet of the nighttime hillside matched the shepherds' peace. They had no fear of bandits or wolves on this night, for the soft glow of starshine allowed them to make out the shapes of their sleeping sheep. Suddenly, the peace of the night was shattered by a heavenly brilliance that blinded and confused them. All around them shone the glory of the Lord, and angel voices split the silence with triumphant harmonies. The shepherds trembled in fear. High above them peered a herald angel. Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you tidings of great joy. Unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. There will be a sign. You will find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. An even more brilliant light streamed down from the heavens as the great company of angels sang. Glory to God in the highest, on earth peace and goodwill to all. When the angels departed, the shepherds traveled in haste to town. As they made their way through the narrow streets, the shepherds recalled the herald angels' wondrous words. Do not be afraid, for I bring you tidings of great joy. They approached the open door of the stable cautiously, with some fear lingering still. But there, just as the herald angel had foretold, was the babe, the Prince of Peace. 
wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. With deep reverence and great joy, the humble shepherds knelt around the sleeping child. And in their hearts, they knew that when they returned to their fields, they would take with them the wondrous news of God's great love to share with any and all who would listen. When we wait in the night, in the hush that only stars can hold as they bend toward the coming of the light, when we wait in the night, laboring with anticipation of what midnight shall bring, when we wait in the night, listening to the cadence of minutes beat in rhythm with the birth of hope, may we hold our collective breaths with the angelic host as they clutch their restless alleluias. For God is on the way, the mother is laboring, the father pacing, the stable readying, the word is waiting, the light is sliding and the promise is breaking through. When we wait in the longing for midnight in expectation of good news, may we choose to wait together and find we have moved to the edge of our seats. For in such anticipation, it is the only place for the word to be born among us.
Our second reading of the birth narrative. At that time, Caesar Augustus decreed that a census be taken and every person in the entire Roman world had to go to his or her own town to register. Joseph, being of the line of David, was required to go to Bethlehem to register with Mary. There they found the town crowded with people, and so there was no place for Mary and Joseph to stay. But thanks to the kindness of a stranger, they found shelter in a stable where Mary gave birth to her firstborn son surrounded by animals and hay. She wrapped the babe in cloth and placed him in a manger. Now out in the fields, an angel 
appeared to the shepherds who were tending their flocks by night. The angels announced that the Savior had been born in the town of David. And then suddenly a great host of heavenly beings appeared with the angels and began singing praises to God. It was a heavenly sight. The shepherds decided to travel to Bethlehem and see the child the angels had told them about. And when they arrived, they found Mary, Joseph, and the baby still in the stable. That visit changed the shepherds, and they began to spread the word about this amazing child and everything the angel had said about him. Meanwhile, Mary kept quiet, thinking about the words of the prophets and the angels. It must have been hard for her to understand that because of the little baby sleeping in her arms, the world would be changed forever. From that night, we go to the night when Jesus gathered with his disciples. And after supper, he shared bread and cup. For much of Jesus' ministry involved sharing supper with people, with the rich and the poor, as well as those considered unworthy or unclean. God's children of every type were brought to the table. Throughout his life and ministry, Jesus showed us that God's love was abundant and had no boundaries and no borders. It didn't matter who you were and who people thought you were. All are welcome. All are embraced. And so, it is in the sharing of this simple meal together that we begin to see a glimpse of God's banquet of love and grace. Where everyone is welcome. Let us pray. <clears throat> God of mercy and grace, you gather at this table with us, uniting us in a great fellowship of love. We offer praise and thanksgiving for this abundance that has been set before us the abundance of your love, a communion table that we share with all our brothers and sisters. We come in remembrance and celebration of the gift of Jesus, who walked among us, showing us how to love without limits, offer mercy without judgment, and bring justice to the oppressed. Bring that grace-filled presence into our midst as we share together as your people. Amen. After supper, Jesus took the bread. He gave thanks for it. And then... He broke it, saying, This is my body which is broken for you out of my great love for you. Whenever you eat of this bread, whenever you share together, remember that I am with you. And then after sharing the bread, he took the cup and he said, This is the cup of everlasting love given to you out of my great love for you, ministering to you now in Christ's name. I invite you to share in the bread and the cup of God's love.
wonder, find a place in your soul and dance with you unexpected steps. May all joy be at home within your heart and weave a sacred rhythm throughout this life and all to come. May blessing be your constant companion and cradle you, strengthen you, and love you always. May all stillness enter into your very soul, forging a peace that gives to all things a place. And may God let you see what others miss, promise cradled in every wonder, the flow of life shaping a sacred story where love and you dance together daily. And when eyes that have seen all living draw into focus salvation's intent, may they recognize at day's end a promise, a deed, a gift, fresh born in the world. Merry Christmas, everyone. Ah. Uh -huh.